Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my Java video tutorial series. In the last part of the tutorial, which you should definitely watch if you haven't seen it yet, I covered some of the basics of using threads inside of Java. And today I'm going to show you pretty much all the other different things you can do with threads inside of Java. And instead of using things like the sleep method and all kinds of for loops and things, we're going to use a lot more intricate sort of system. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm basically going to do the same thing here. I'm going to be checking the system time, and then I'm going to be performing checks on the mail and the calendar. So check system time is going to be pretty much the same as the last tutorial. However, I'm going to use implements runnable instead of extending the thread class. And that's going to allow us to be able to extend another class, which is always a great thing. Other than that, though, basically all we're doing here is we're just using date format library that we have up here. We're opening up a date object. We're going to define our location. We're going to be able to format that date information so that we're able to get the time instead of getting any other information. And then we're going to save it as a string and then I'll put it on the screen. All the same stuff we did before. So there's no reason to go through that. So basically all I needed to do here is make this implement the runnable interface and everything's done. So we can just save that and move on. Now I created another class, it's called Perform System Check, and this is gonna be all brand new. And this guy's gonna introduce you to a lot of different things. First thing, I'm gonna import a new library. And what this library is gonna allow me to do is lock down a method. Because this method is gonna be called by two different threads, there's a possibility that both of those threads could call it at exactly the same time. So we wanna protect against that, and that's what this guy's gonna do. And I'll get more into this, it's re-entrant lock. There you are, you're gonna see what this library does here in a second. And then of course, we're gonna have this implement runnable, again, so that we can extend other classes maybe in the future, just provides that extra option. Make sure it says implements, not implement. And then we're gonna define exactly what we're gonna be checking for. So I'm gonna create a private string, name it check what, and it's just gonna pass along whenever inside of this constructor, whenever we create a new one of these guys, it's gonna say, okay, what exactly are we checking? And it's gonna be passed inside of there. So I'll just say this check what, right like that. And then of course, check what needs to be passed to the constructor, which you have a lot of work with, so there's no reason for me to go into that. Then we're gonna use the re-entrant lock up here to find a new re-entrant lock. And like I said, you're gonna see here in a second how that works. New, like that, and that's all nice. And then of course, just find that this is a string. And like I said before, whenever we wanna protect the run method from being accessed by two different potential threads at the same time, you can do it in multiple different ways. I'm gonna show you how to do it with the re-entrant lock, and I'm also gonna show you how to do it with synchronized. If you type in synchronized on any method, whenever any other thread accesses this method, it's gonna be locked down and no other thread's gonna be able to access it. So that's one way to protect it. However, you do not wanna synchronize all your methods because this will slow down Java pretty dramatically. So that's one way to protect it. Another way to protect it, however, is to lock it down. Now you do that is just type in lock and then lock, right like that. And that's gonna lock down this method from being able to be accessible. And then this guy's just gonna go system out print line. And it's gonna tell whoever's using this program exactly what's being checked. And it's gonna do that by going check what for the specific thread that's calling it. And then it's real simple to unlock this method whenever you're done with it. All you're gonna do is come here and instead of typing lock, you're gonna type in unlock and file save it, now this guy's able to be used. So it's all nice, clean code, there's nothing over complicated. Now we're gonna jump into the actual lesson part of this, and I'm gonna show you a whole bunch more things you can do with threads. Now the first thing we wanna do here is explain that instead of, like with the last tutorial where I coordinated threads using timing methods, and meaning specifically the sleep method, here I'm gonna show you how to execute the code based off of predefined time schedules and a whole bunch of other things. Now if I wanna use a schedule whenever certain events are gonna be triggered, I need to import a library. And it's Java util concurrent, and then this is a long one. It's scheduled thread pull executor. And this is gonna be the guy that I'm gonna to use to throw all my threads into a pull and then be able to access them and do all kinds of different things with it. However, if you wanna be able to use these guys, you're gonna to have to define a time schedule that you're gonna use for your threads. I'm just gonna to have to come in here and go concurrent and type in time unit and put a star. And now I'm gonna be able to find that. You're gonna see here in a second exactly how that works. And now just to prove to you that you can actually call for threads outside of the main method inside of Java, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go add threads to pull. I'm gonna call an outside method. And then I actually have to come in here and create this guy. And it's just gonna be public, static, void. And we'll come in here and start playing around with all the different other thread methods that are available to you. All right, now what we have to do is create our thread pull. So we're gonna copy this guy up here, paste it inside of there, and I'm gonna call it event pull. 
And what this guy's going to do is allow you to schedule code execution at some time in the future. And also on top of that, it's going to allow you to have code execute repetitively based off of different time periods. Now, what you have to do here is make sure that this guy is big enough to hold all your threads. Now, you would think from looking at what we had here previously that we might have two or three threads. Well, you're actually going to find out that that's going to be different. I'm going to put five in there. and It's actually going to be a little bit bigger than what I need. And you guys always ask me for quizzes. So in this part of this tutorial, I'm actually going to quiz you a bit here. First First, what we need to do is go and add threads individually to the poll. And this is how you do it. You just call event poll, and then you're going to call schedule at fixed rate. And we're going to create a new guy here. And this in Eclipse, it shows you exactly what you're going to need to do here. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object, check system time. That's going to create a new one by making a call to the constructor. And here under initial delay, I'm going to say that I want it to wait no seconds, just to put zero inside of there. So this is going to execute immediately. And then I want it to continue to execute every two seconds thereafter. And this is where the time unit part comes in. I'm going to have to tell it that I want to use seconds as my way of charting all this information. Now, if I want to create another thread and throw it into the thread pool, it's real simple. I'm just going to call perform system check instead. And then here, let's say that I want to be able to check the mail. And let's say that I want to wait five seconds after the program starts to start executing. And then thereafter, check my mail every five seconds thereafter. I know you wouldn't normally do it that often, but we're just doing a little simulation here. And then, of course, let's come in here and also create another one for calendar. And let's say we want to wait 10 seconds and then check our calendar every other 10 seconds afterwards. Of, of course, it's completely ridiculous. We'd never check your calendar that often, but I just want the information to pop on the screen. Now, it looks like we have three threads running, right? This is the part of the test part here, what, what I had mentioned before. So let's go system out. I'm going to show you how to figure out exactly how many threads you have running. We're going to go number of threads. It's your time to guess exactly how many threads we actually have. Thread, active, count. This method right here is actually going to tell you how many threads we have. And let's execute this guy and just see exactly what we got going on here. And as you can see, we have four threads. Okay, so we only created three of them. So what is the other thread? And you can see everything's just going right through here and fixing everything as we're going. Well, I'm going to show you. You might have a guess already on what exactly that fourth thread is. You're going to find out in a second. What I'm going to need to do, though, is create an array of threads to be able to perform this check. And I'm going to call this list of threads equal new thread. And you also want to make sure this is big enough to hold all of your current threads. Well, what's a shortcut for that? Well, I'll just call this method right here, active count. Throw this inside of there, then you're positive. You're always going to have enough room. Okay, so we created our array of threads. What are we going to do with it? Or how are we going to fill it out? Call thread dot enumerate and then put list of threads inside of there. And it's going to take all the current threads and it's going to throw them inside of this array we just created right here. Now what we can do is figure out all those threads. So we're going to call this for statement and then go thread i colon list of threads right like that. And we're going to cycle through all these different guys. So I'll go system now call print line. And then if we want to say print out the name of the thread, how do we do that? Call get name. And that's going to print them all out to the screen. And as you can see, here is the mysterious thread main. You may have forgotten about that, but that is our fourth thread. And you can see all the other different threads that are here as, as well as what their names are. Another thing you can do is check the priority for threads, meaning if there's a conflict of some sort, which thread is going to be able to execute over the other ones. And you have to understand that whatever thread created all the other threads, which is, you know, now main, the priority of whatever main is, is going to be the priority by default for all the other threads that main creates. And the default priority for main is five. So one guess, what is the priority for all the other threads that main created? We can just come in here and go get priority like that. And this guy's going to be able to show us the priorities. See, five, 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 right there, that information. So that's a way to check priority. How do we set priority? Well, I'm not going to go through it, but basically you go through the same sort of sets, except you're going to type in your whatever your thread name is, and then you're going to go set priority and then give it a priority. And one is going to be of the lowest priority. 10 is of the highest priority. And of course, you can use all the different priorities in between there. And this is thread name, not three name. Sorry about that. So let's just get rid of that for now. And all this code is available underneath the video and it goes into a lot of different information. But our thread as it stands right now is basically going to run indefinitely. So what do we do if we don't want it to run indefinitely? Well, we create a try block 
And this isn't cheating, really. We're calling to sleep. And we're going to say, like, let's say we want it to run for 20 seconds. Well, that's exactly how you do it. So you're still getting all this additional power up here, but you're also going to be able to define real easily exactly how long the entire, all these threads are going to be able to run. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing. Interrupted exception, just like we did before. Type in E, and then basically just junk information and file save that. And basically what would happen if you would want to shut down all these threads? Now, of course, you could call a method to shut all these guys down, but just to keep it simple, I'm going to come in here and if I want to go event pull, right, like that, and then just call the shutdown method. And that is going to completely cease execution for all the different threads. And we proceed. And you can see none of the thread information is coming down here because it didn't get to this part and instead shut all the threads down right there. So there's a ton of new tricks and tools you can use to use threads inside of Java. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.